Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be discussing another novel, Arrow of God, by Chinua Achebe. We are going to be analyzing the plot of the novel and discuss the significant incident in the novel as well. Please subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell so that you get notified when the video on the themes in the novel is uploaded. The Arrow of God is set in rural Nigeria uh, during the 1920s in the southern part of the country where the Igbo people reside. And um, the novel begins with a war between two neighboring regions of rural Igbo land and the two neighboring villages are Umairo and Okberi. Though we don't know the boundaries of Okberi, we know that Umairo is made up of six villages and these six villages are linked by their worship of a common god called Ulu. One of the major link and nexus between the villages is that god called Ulu that the, the, the priest of the Ulu is called Ezeulu. So, the people of Umairo start a war with Okberi over land they want to claim. They are encouraged to start the war by a worthy man named Nwaka, who challenges Ulu. This war is launched against the advice of Ulu's chief priest, which is called Ezeulu. The colonial administration steps in to stop the war and rules in favor of Okberi. After discussing the matter with Ezeulu, the one man in Umairo who tells the truth. Also, Captain Winterbottom, a British colonial official who commands the local station, breaks and burns all the gums in Umairo becoming a legend in that process. Meanwhile, the people of Umairo becomes very angry with Ezeulu because he didn't take their side. Why are they so angry with him? Because he decided to say the truth instead of trying to favor his village, Umairo, against Okweri. So that angered the people and the people were so angry with Ezeulu for saying the truth. So, five years later, life in Umairo has returned to normal. Christians' missionaries have made major inroads into society, establishing converts and trying to show that the old gods are ineffective just as Christians preach in most of their gatherings that the other gods are not effective and not spring and not all powerful just like the gods of the Christian. So they preach that in Umairo community and then they establish converts and get many people. So Ezeulu is sending his son Oduche to church. Oduche is the last son of Ezeulu. And why did he send him to the church? To be his eyes and ears and to learn the ways of the white man. And what does that prompt? It prompts a lot of animosity between Ezeulu and Mwaka and their rest respective villages has grown to the point called key and take the head. That key and take the, the head, in other words, means things have gotten to the point where men in the two villages try to kill each other using poison, using local made charm. Mwaka is fortified and strengthened by his relationship with Eze, Eze Idemili, the high priest of the god Idemili. Though Idemili is a lesser god in comparison to Ulu, the competition between the two priests is dividing Umairo, creating suspicion and ill will among the brothers. So, 
But the competition isn't limited to within the Igbo religion. The missionaries called the Christian Igbo, including Oduche, to kill the sacred python. Oduche chickens out at the last minute, putting the snake in a box instead. But his family discovers the terrible deed when he is at church. Why did the church want to kill the snake, the python that belonged to Eze, that belonged to Idemili God? And uh, the python is being taken care of by Eze Idemili, the priest of Idemili God. Why? Because they believe the Christian God is supreme. So, do you anything to the royal python is considered an abomination? The royal python belonged to the god Idemili. And as soon as the priest of Idemili hears about it, he sends a messenger to cheat Ezeulu and to ask what he intends to do to purify his house. That is to make up for what his son tried to do to the python of Idemili. Ezeulu respond by telling Idemili, by Eze Idemili that uh, he should go and die, that he has nothing to do to appease the god of Idemili. And note, I told you in the beginning that Ulu, as a god, is higher than Idemili. So Ezeulu, as the priest of God, feels that he cannot sacrifice anything to Idemili or to give anything to Eze Idemili, to sacrifice to Idemili, because he is serving a higher God. And that creates a lot of tension because Oduche did not appease the God Idemili for doing sacrile sacrilegious thing by taking the snake and trying to kill the snake. So, and a lot of tension created, and there was a lot of tension in in between the Ezeulu and Eze Demili, and also between Ezeulu and Waka. So the colonial administration has commissioned a new road to be built connecting Okweri with Umairo. They have run out of fund but still need to complete the road. So Mr. Wright, the overseer, petitioned to conscript labor. He received permission, and Umairo is the unlucky recipient of the demand for free labor. One day, Ezeulu's son, Obika, is late getting to work. That is where he's supposed to be working as a free laborer. And in getting to work late, he was beaten and tortured by Mr. Wright. And that ties up a lot of resentment by all the men working as free laborer. And they began to ask a lot of questions. When no query men are paid for their work, why should they work? Why should the Umairo men work for free? What makes them different? What makes the query men different? Why should they be treated like this? Though they grumble among themselves they are never able to come to a decision about what to do. So, because Ezeulu assumes that Obika has done something to deserve the wiping, he precipitates a crisis in his own household. Edogo, his oldest son, gets to thinking and decides that the old man's propensity to choose favorite among his sons has created a problem. He believes that Ezeulu has tried to influence Ulu's decision about which son will be the next priest by sending Oduche to learn the religion of the white man. Ezeulu has essentially taken Oduche out of the running among his children who will replace him as the priest of Ulu. And Ezeulu has trained Wafo in the ways of the priesthood. So he is clearly staking his claim on Wafo as the one Ulu will choose. But Edogo begins to wonder what will happen if Ulu doesn't choose Wafo? If he chooses Edogo or Obika, what will happen to the priesthood? 
it will create conflict and division in the family. And Edel go as Edel's son, we have to deal with it. He goes to Ezolu's friend, which is Akwebe, and asks him to speak to his father, Ezolu. But Akwebe finds that Ezolu is not receptive to a talk at all about the division within Umairo, blaming the people of Umairo for they are white for the white man's uh, arrival. So he blamed the people for the arrival of the white man, and the people of Umairo tried to blame Ezeulu because he told the white man the truth when with a button step in to stop the war between Okberi and uh, Umairo. Now, who are we going to blame? Ezeulu is also unreceptive to report of division within his own household. He admits that he sacrificed Oduche, not so much to put him out of the running for the priesthood, but because he sees the threat to Umairo and to the Igbo posed by Christianity. Such a situation requires the spring sacrifice that of a human being. And so he has sacrificed Oduche to the God of, the Christ of Christianity so that in case Christianity took over Umairo, he will also have a stake in it to rule Oduche. So you could see the wisdom that uh, Ezeul was doing, was uh, uh, employing. Meanwhile, Captain Winterbottom has been under another kind of stress. Indirect rule is the ideology that rules the day. And he is under indirect order, under direct order, to find a chief for Umairo. He decided that Ezolu is just the man for the job and sent a messenger to fetch Ezolu. What did Ezolu do? Ezolu refuses to go, saying that the priest of Ulu doesn't leave his hut and dispatches the messenger back to Winterbottom with the message that if we Tabato want to see Ezeulu, he have to come and visit Ezeulu. We Tabato issues an order for Ezeulu's arrest because Ezeulu refused to go and see him. And he sent two policemen to fetch him. So the next morning, after consulting with the elders and men of title in Umairo, Ezeulu decided to set out for Okberi to find out what Winterbottom wanted. His heart is angry because Umairo continues to blame him for the white man's presence and because they don't show Ulu proper respect. The white man doesn't show Ulu any kind of respect. So his arc enemy, Ezolu's arc enemy, Waka, continues to challenge Ulu and the people do nothing about it. So the two policemen sent to arrest Ezeulu pass him on the way, but don't realize it until they reach his compound and learn that Ezeulu has gone to Okberi. In Okberi, Winterbottom suddenly becomes E. The African servant of Winterbottom decides that Ezeulu must have a lot of power. Because Winterbottom is struck E only after he issues the warrant for arrest of Ezeulu. So when Ezeulu arrives, the servants are afraid. They don't want to lock him up as ordered by Winterbottom. Instead, they pretend that the bedroom is a guest room and try to make Ezeulu comfortable. On his first night in Okberi, Ezeulu has a vision and begins that his real battle is with his own people, not with the white man at all. In his vision, he sees Waka challenge Ulu and the people spitting on him, Ezeulu, saying he is the priest of a dead god. He begins to see that the white man has been able to take advantage of Umairo's division to sow further seed of destruction. He hopes with Abotton detention for a long time so he can better 
plan his revenge against the people of Umairo. Was he able to take his revenge? Ezeulu is detained for a couple of months. First, Clark decides to teach him a lesson by making him wait. Then he offers Ezeulu the position of chief, but Ezeulu refuses. Angry, Clark clapped him in prison, saying, and with a button commenting for putting Ezeulu in prison, saying he should keep Ezeulu locked up until he learns to cooperate. But Clark begins to suffer a lot of pains of conscience, realizing that he doesn't have a legitimate reason to keep Ezeulu imprisoned. He is relieved when he hears from Witabotan's superior, advising against creating new warrant chief. This gives Clark the excuse to let Ezeulu go. When Ezeulu returns home, everybody is glad to see him again. And Ezeuli realizes that his anger was directed not against his real neighbors, but against an idea that they were mocking Ulu and disrespecting Ezeulu. Nevertheless, he lays low and sets his plan in action. When the time for announcing the feast of the new year comes, Ezeulu failed to announce it. Even when he was reminded by his assistants and by the elders, he refuses to announce the date for the New Year festival. The elders tell Ezeulu that he should just quickly eat the yams which we had left, which was the claim of Ezeulu that until he eats the yam, he is not going to announce for any New Year festival until he eats the old yam. So, as they told Ezeulu to eat the old yams, the remaining two old yams, and then announce the new young festival, but Ezeulu refuses and he never want to announce it. So the Christian catechist, Mr. Good Country, recognizes this as an opportunity. He says that anybody who want to offer their yam to the Christian God instead, so they can harvest their yam, will receive the protection of the Christian God as well. As people begin to suffer, they do just that. Meanwhile, Obika, who is sick, is asked to help in the funeral preparation for Amalu, one of the elders in the village who had died some months back. He helped with one of the funeral rituals by carrying the marks for Obazulobodo, the night spirit, and chasing after day. He rose so hard and so fast. However, he dropped dead and that shocked everybody in the community. And when he dropped dead, the people say it is a judgment against Ezeulu. His God Ulu has spoken. Ezeulu has become stubborn and proud and the God has not sided with his priest against the people. But it was a bad time to humiliate the priest. It allowed the people to take liberties. That that year, many of the yams were harvested in the name of the Christian God. And the crop reaped afterward were also reaped in the name of the Christian God. As the novel Arrow of God comes to a close, it seems that worship of the Christian God has replaced the worship of a uh, of ulu now ezolu is mourning the death of his son the people of umairo have turned to the christian god and ilu ulu is becoming an old god that do not have more worshipers please subscribe to the channel click the notification bell so that you get notified when the video on the teams in the novel is uploaded thank you and have a good day.